Hello, welcome to another special edition of Plat Chat. This time we're going to be looking at the Atlanta Reign. We've got Custer alongside us who has strong opinions. Strong. I don't know any of them. He's just been muttering under his breath about the DPS. So let me get to it, Custer, because a lot of people, a lot of Atlanta Reign fans, they're very obnoxious online because they used to the, be DeFran fans. They might be the worst. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't mind them. They kind of calmed down over the course of the season, but they've started to sprout up again because this team made some big acquisitions let, in terms of yeah. the DPS. Let's uh, hate on Abbas as well because he put the number Number two in his season rankings. He put them number two for 2020. Two's a, two's a little Two hard. is way too high. So that gave them a confidence boost. Okay. And now the Rain uh, fans, well, they're out, you know, on Twitter. Oh, boy. Papega. You Muppet. Yeah, okay. I don't think that they're at number two. But they've made some big additions. So let's take a look at the roster. Because they signed Edison, a huge free agent. It has to be the biggest. It has to be the biggest signing. I think of almost Okay, this calm down. No, I think of this season, I think the fact that Atlanta gets Edison is like huge. The fact that you can pair him with Erster, I think yes, puts them that is incredibly wild, high. I think their DPS line might be, I would put them top three D, uh, DPS to her. Do you, you not look think, at me like that. I, I really <laughs> think, I think that he's right as well. Because you what? look, because you look at other teams that have insane talent, like Sparkle, like Glister, like Profit. These players all got paired up with mediocre partners. Exactly. Whereas you have Erster, a player that, was actually very good, like just breaking into the, uh, oh my God, he's incredible. And then you pair him alongside a potential rookie of the year and, you know, uh, Sparkle, uh, Glister. Uh, these players are also, Doha, maybe. These players are like also potential rookie of the years. But Edison, got to be up there. You and, guys, and so you you guys gotta, feel too strongly about this. I'm not even going to argue it. But you, I, I, I think, think you've got a fatty DPS line. I, I agree. I, I th And I think adding Sharp as well, like Sharp has the potential to do something. I yeah. think Baby Bay is like, Hey, I, I I wouldn't have dropped him. I agree. Like having keeping yeah. him on the roster, he might be able to come in and like offer something for sure. He also has a lot of veteran talent that he could yeah. probably add to this roster as well. He's a good person to have on a team. I think um, I could totally see Sharp and Edison like swapping back and forth. Yes. I don't think Edison is like a lock for that slot. But that's why I really love the Sharp no. signing. It is like Edison. Yeah. It maybe like as you said, he could be a rookie of the year. He could also you know have a flower and joins the league and just like he could do and yeah. so i think adding sharp as well has that um adds something different another rookie that has a lot to prove yeah it's a safety uh, net and and that's why i really like that dps lineup. and that's what i'm yeah i think like. this dps lineup is wonderful i have nothing to complain about there yeah. but the fact that so many people are taking this dps lineup and extrapolating a top three finish for oh, the I atlanta know. rain yeah. i think is is wrong because then you look at their tank line and their support line and they are Honestly, pretty average. I don't see Ooh, much. Oh, you think they're average? I think Gator and Hawk are I actually Gator, very uh, exciting. I'm a Gator and Hawk fan. You, yeah, think, I you think, think Gator and Hawk alongside each other as main tank and off tank are going to be... I think uh, that's one of the better tank duos in the league. Yeah. Wow. I, <laughs> and I, I'm actually going to side with Johnny on this one because... Coming from Atlanta um, Academy, yeah. they both have, they have a lot of synergy. And I played against those guys. Those guys... Don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah. They're, they're super just going to run at you. And I think that is the perfect people that you need for this team. Is they're just winning. Yes, they don't have as much experience as these leagues. But I think these guys are going to come through. And they're just going to like flop it out on the desk. And then everyone's just going to like run away. So I know Gator played Sigma in the playoffs. But honestly, he was one of the most pleasant surprises in the playoffs yeah. for me. He was so oh, yeah. good. Yeah. And then you have Hawk as well. That's really impressed during the gauntlet. And I'm just I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled. I think I like... Hawk, but I wish that my issue with their tank line essentially is that if that plan A fucks up, they don't have a very there's not a plan B. Look, the, man, look at this board. There's not a lot of plan B's on this board, man. <laughs> sure, there's a lot of shitty plans, so but honestly, their plan B is probably still, yeah, oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. What I'm arguing against here is them being a top three team. I oh, still yeah, have yeah, them yeah. in the top 10, of course, but you don't have them in the top five. I think they're on the edge. I think they're like, I think they're probably mm. around number five. I, I would, think five, six. Is I would, about where I would, I would say put. they're between four and six. And I, so I think putting yep. five is Whoa. like a pretty good estimate. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's okay. I think they'll put in them top three when there's other really talented, like you, you have you, to do it Look at the support line. I think that like we talk about the DPS line and the tank line, how they have like these backups. Their only support line is Masar and Dogman. But uh, uh, Sefi, Brad, has gone on record saying that they are going to have a 12-man roster for 2020. Okay. So we just don't know who it is yet. I don't even know who's rumored to be their backups. There aren't that many people even available, but they just want them as scrim partners, as far as I'm aware. So it, it, it doesn't... 
necessarily mean that they're going to bring in, you know, people to replace Master and Dogman. Yeah. You can still think about it in terms of Master and Dogman being the starting talent, but they will have backups. But even then, Masa is really good. I don't I, think, I I don't think you should sell Masa, Masa short yeah. as well. I do think Masa is good. And I also think that Dogman made a lot of improvements this I year. I, I actually think he's the most improved player of Well, I, I, if you're going to win a championship, I think that maybe he's a weak link. But apart from that, sure. I think he I, I, belongs yeah. in a good the, team. I think their support line is definitely like, before we see any of the uh, additions, I would say if the team was going to fall apart somewhere, it would be the support line. Because yeah. we just don't know what to expect with what's coming yeah. through. Um, but I, would also I, I still think it's solid. We go back to a... Okay, so everyone, I think, really likes to analyze from the current meta. And I think that is just like something that I do every single year is that I yeah. think, okay, yeah. what's the current meta? How should you build teams? I was still talking about like how teams would work in dive when we were doing in 2019 yeah. because we'd seen dives throughout the whole of 2018. Yeah. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, this guy's not so good at Winston. Winston just died in 2019. <laughs> he just ceased to be. So I think a lot of people will be looking at this roster and thinking, wow, well, Gator and Hawk have really impressed recently. What happens if this ends up being a diva meta? And I don't think no. It's, you don't think Hawk's diva is that good either. I think it's what I thought Hawk it's, was only good at diva. That's that would be my concern. Is I thought he was a diva player, like almost one trick. I think he's played a, a pretty good Sigma recently as well. I think his diva has that, been yeah. pretty good, but. Again, if Hawk doesn't succeed, FRD didn't impress me at no, all on, no, on pretty yeah, much sure. anything. And they let go of Darko, which is my issue. Is like you had this player available that would could just have been your little. I don't know if Daco's a one trick as well. Maybe he's good at other things, but Daco seemed like such a crazy piece to okay. release for well, me. Yeah, so Daco was really good, okay, but he didn't fit in with the Atlanta yeah. Reign squad. And now I think this, the, the, the team environment, this is the best team environment yeah, in I, the entire league. The, you think? Is, yeah, yeah, I think they have the I, best totally personalities. They complement each other. They're just, I just, I, I look at this roster and I'm like, I want to be part of that team. I want to. I want to be with them. They're yeah, just, I, I want to. I want to hang out. They are the sure. chat team. Uh, but, okay, so you're so selling me on them. You're selling me. My question becomes. What happens if we go back to dive? Let's say monkey becomes a thing. Does Gator have a good monkey at all? I mean, he was mostly known for his Reinhardt, right? Yeah, he's known yeah. for his but Reinhardt and his Orisa. Sorry, his Sigma um, thing and his Orisa looked, yeah. you know, possible. I, you know, it's a Orisa well, at the end of the day. I, I but, would be more inclined to say Wrecking Ball over Winston. Yeah, but, well, Wrecking sure. Ball or Monkey? Like, does Gator have that in his wheelhouse? Like, obviously, he's shown that he can pick up these characters, but Pokepo was a good Winston in the past. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, not a world, not an incredible Winston by any means, though. He wasn't one of the people that well, you looked in contenders and you were like, holy moly. Good mold. enough. But he was good enough. Yeah. And also, his Orisa was good. You know, back, and also, I think when. that Gator, like knowing main tanks, Gator is such a, such a Chad that he can just learn any hero. He'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'll yeah. just learn any hero and play with yeah. confidence. And that's the most important part. You have to play your hero with confidence. And I think Gator can just steamroll. The, the funniest thing that I look is when I was a player, I used to, well, all long ago, that like a week and a half ago. Um, <laughs> no, but I when I looked at these players, I'm like, you know, fuck this player. Like they're so they just have confidence. They have arrogance. They're not that good. But yeah. now I like take a step back and I ask. I'm like. That's the guy that I would want on my team. Yeah, that guy yeah. who believes in themselves more than anything, and that's why yeah. I believe, I, like, I believe in this team because I know they believe in themselves. Yeah. Well, you have uh, sold me. I don't think that they're a top three though, because I, I mean, we've got NYXL on the board there. We're gonna have the San Francisco Shock. Yeah. Then there's the arguments of stuff like. I mean, other people would say the Vancouver Titans. I got reasons to disagree, yeah, but okay. okay, Vancouver Titans. Other people might say the Philadelphia Fusion should be up there as well. Uh, I mean, who else have we even? I would say argument? Gladiators oh, would be a the Guangzhou mm, Charge. I really Shanghai? believe Shanghai, Shanghai, possibly. Like there are a lot of good teams that we haven't got to yet. Yeah. to make me feel like I don't want to oversell Atlanta Rain. So that, which is why I personally would. What are the coaching staff? The coaching staff for who? Atlanta. Well, that I think is always the place where this team is worrying because Sefi yeah. is not your kind of strategic coach. It's going to He's, be like a player run kind of team. It, I think it's going to be a player run. going to be very sure. player run. I mean, you have Silence and Mentalist to play. Uh, Silence in particular, I think. Mentalist is a new addition. Silence was uh, previously with them last year and I think did pretty good work with them. Uh, but it does scream player run when you look at the chads involved yeah. on this yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I, and I honestly don't think a coach exists that could coach this team and really just <laughs> take full control. And I think that's- That's honestly, blasphemy against the Church of Krusty. Oh, <laughs> I think Sefi is a perfect coach, head coach for this team. Yeah. Because he's just chill as fuck. He's just chill as fuck. He's, he's, yeah. He just keeps them in line and he lets them do what they need to do. Yeah. 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 Uh, over under. Well, this they, is actually they very a, interesting. This is a hard one. This is a hard one. Yeah. They had a good season. Yeah. 
they went 16 and 12 and got sixth oh, place. Nice. I, I, got over. Yeah. I got over. I think they were over. The I, thing is, they peaked at the end of the season last yeah. year and did, had a good run in the playoffs. So I think they just started to show what they're capable of. Yeah. If they extend that over the course of a season, I think they're over. We all go over. Where are we going? So where are we going to put them? Like? They I finished in sixth in 2019 once you take the playoffs into account. Yeah. I, I want to put them four or five. I want to put them five. I, I, I'm happy to put them five. I'm happy to put them five. Yeah. Yep. I mean, uh, I'm good was, with five. Was, I would have put them sixth. I would have put them the same as last year, but five, you've, you've sold me on it. I think the issues that they would run into, oh, I'm going to make you full screen, uh, Custer, as you write this, but the issues that they would run into, I can I can see explained away. Outside of them, if there is a major roster uh, meta shift and we go to something weird, I still do think that this tank line could struggle because... They they just I you just can't see the them experience struggle like kind of last stuff. year or like not like last year because obviously they played well last year yeah. but I just I can't see them I can't see them underperform like so many other teams I have done I can yeah. because they, they cannot have betray so us. many personalities on this team I think that would be my biggest thing is like I think it's very unlikely but if something cracks down the middle of this team I think it's going to be a massive issue no like Dogman Gator like there's too many cool people like Sharp is most chill okay, no, he's so also pretty quiet but, his, his, but it's like my argument is like what happens if Dogman and Gator end up going against each other they, they lose a couple of games they shouldn't lose and then one blames the other and I then think, it falls apart I don't Do think, think Dogman though is the kind of player yeah, that does true. that he's not very like, standoffish yeah. he's quite he's a little passive aggressive at times but he actually recovers his cool very quickly yeah. like he's gone from losing and being crushed to literally being like yeah okay I'll do an interview on the desk for you you. There are very, very few players that yeah. will accept something like that, and he is able to do it and keep his cool. I, I like him. Massa tilts a little bit. Like yeah. when we used to listen to the comms of Atlanta Rain, and Defran would just be like screaming, "Ignore the coach! Ignore the coach!" Massa would get tilted at that, but yeah. they don't have Defran anymore. They don't I, have somebody who's just an absolute head case. Speaking about personalities, I think the biggest danger for this team is if Dogman becomes delusional. And just like, yeah, if they get any, uh, like, I'm a star personality. Everyone loves me. I'm the clown. And he just like overwhelms the team, and it's just like, sure. yo, I'm clowning in scrims. So like, dog man, <laughs> yeah. if you behave, you're fine. <laughs> if you don't behave, Steph is going to replace you and win a championship. And, and that's sort of what I mean. That's sort of like the same thing. Right. It's like I think there are things that could come through, but as I said, I believe in this team. Like, okay, wow. well, there we my go. Biggest concern for it. We got them at fifth with an over compared to their 2019 record, and we're going to disappear before someone's sawing off the roof of the house. <laughs> I don't know whether you guys can hear that, but <laughs> it sounds like someone is sawing through the roof of the house. It's a vacuum. <laughs> 